Hey everyone, welcome to the channel, welcome to today's video and in this video I'm going to break down the lighting and a little bit of the work process that went into shooting these recent images for the online fitness platform Grindhouse. So welcome to today's video. If you are new to the channel, if you've not subscribed, what are you doing? If we haven't met before, my name is Rich McKeever. I am a Scottish commercial photographer living and working here in London. And on this channel, I try and share a variety of things such as behind the scenes videos, Photoshop workflows, Capture One workflows, lighting reviews, and just try and generally share my journey as I try and navigate my way through living, working, carving a career as a photographer here in London. Earlier in the year, I was approached by PT, business entrepreneur, Louis Renix, who I've worked with on a couple of different projects before. He got together with a few other former Barry's Bootcamp trainers, and they have founded their own online fitness platform. Um, we shot these initially for the launch, the platform has been live now for a few months. They are absolutely smashing it. They're all elite trainers in their own right. They all have a great camera presence and it, it kind of made sense for them to go out, form this own, their own business themselves and start to push this forward. So like I said, I've worked with Louis on a few projects before. He approached me about shooting the imagery for this and it's always a good time working with Louis and the other trainers, they're all super high energy. So obviously I was more than game to get involved. Okay, so let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Let's get into the lighting setup. The base, the sauce, the foundation of this meal, of this lighting setup was a two by two meter scrim. So I have this big two by two meter frame and I have a half stop silk that goes with it. And I like to fire some lighting through that. Two by two meters is really big. Essentially you're creating a massive diffused softbox. And then on top of that, we'll start to add in lights here and there and kind of build and sprinkle a little magic around it. Through this, where I would normally just flash a head straight through that, I might have a softbox on the head then going through the scrim. You can see in some of the behind the scenes footage here. What I changed up this time is I got two Profoto D2 heads and I bounced them into a little white umbrella. By using two heads and bouncing them into the umbrellas and then through the scrim, we're getting an even softer, but still equally as powerful overall light source. This lighting just by itself looks great. I've used this in e-commerce before, put a little silver or another little light under the model to kind of uplight any uh, shadows in the eyes and it works beautifully. Going on from that, I wanted to add a little bit of a dynamic feel to the images. So I wanted two strip boxes coming in from behind, clipping our models there. This is a hard hitting, powerful online platform. So I didn't want the light to be too flat. For this, I wanted punchy, dynamic lighting. Working with the two by two meter scrim, I also have a one by one meter silver reflector, which I just placed on the floor, really close to the model. It kicks up any light and kind of helps get rid of any unflattering eye bags or any deep shadows that this big overall light source is going to create. And on top of that, just to round everything off, I used this which is a beauty dish with a grid. So if I just kind of change the angle of this, um, this like grid here, this egg crate of sorts, you can see if I angle it like this, no light is getting through between myself and the camera. But if it was angled straight at the camera like this, look at how much lighting is getting through. So that gives you an idea of how much that focuses the light. We have this with a grid between the model and the light source. So our big two by two meter light source is there. And then between the model and that two by two meter frame, we have this with a grid on it. This just allows me to punch in a little bit of extra focused light on our athlete and I really think that this is what take is what took the images to the next level. I'm so pleased with how these turned out. 
um, I think is some of the best fitness images that I've shot in a studio to date. There's some real bangers in there. So yeah, this is what made the difference. Forgive the tape and everything. This is a cheap version. Profit will do their own one and you also get a collapsible one. This was off eBay. I think it cost me like 30 quid. Uh, 2021, I need to up my light shaping game. But for now, we can see uh, we can see it's all bent and buckled and everything, but it does a great job. So I hope that pretty much covers the lighting setup. Let's have a quick recap. Two by two meter frame, two strip boxes either side, four by one strip boxes, creating a little bit of clip, a little bit of dynamism, dynamism dynamics, dy creating a dynamic look. We've got a silver reflector, getting rid of all our unflattering shadows, although this is a brilliant light source, this two by two meter it is above them. We don't want any eye shadows. And then we have the grid spot focused on our athlete, on their face. It's a silver grid, gives a little bit of an extra sparkle. And that was our lighting set. And then once that was all set up and we tested the light and everything was great and when everyone was happy, we just got each instructor in and out. They ran through the exercises that they had filmed in the previous days. And then we got some like lifestyle shots of them like pointing at the camera like, hey, come on, let's go, we're finish. All that stuff that they can use as like thumbnails and uh, headshots as profile for the instructors and stuff on the website. Now I've done other videos on my workflow from this point on and they are linked up in the top left there. But basically I shoot tethered to capture one and either on the day as we're shooting, the client will flick through the images and I will let them know to mark them with a little one star. And then come the end of the day, I'll export all one stars, send the low res JPEGs to the client. They'll give me the file names of their selects and I will retouch their selects from there. Simple as that. So once Louis, the client, and the rest of the business owners had made their selects, I jumped into Bridge. Now there's a great tutorial on how to use Bridge by a photographer called Corey Vanderplu. I've spoken about his channel on my channel before. He's got a great tutorial on Bridge. It's linked up there, go check it out. Basically, we needed two packages for the client. We needed a social package, which was a large amount of images to help populate social feeds, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. And then we had what I like to call the hero images, which was about 11 images, which are gonna be the most prominent on their platform. So that could be front page of the app or website, banners, PR, things like that. So with the hero images, we jumped into Photoshop, did the retouching there. I have a video on retouching in Photoshop on my channel. It's linked up here as well. Go check that out if you want a little bit more of an in-depth look into how I retouch in Photoshop. And then with this social package, I use this technique of working between bridge and camera raw in Photoshop as a kind of really fast and effective way of quality control. That way I could process somewhere in the region of 30 to 50 images, still have an element of editing done to them. So I've still elevated them a little bit, not quite as high as my prominent hero images, but of a standard, of a high enough standard so that I am happy and the client is happy sharing them on Instagram. The reason for this quick turnaround, quick edit, is that if you are charging anywhere between 30 to 100 pound plus for retouching per image, if the client needs 30 images, then your maths, you're kind of in the region of 3,000 pound plus. And for a new company to spend that purely on retouching is kind of out of the realms of possibility. So it's a case of finding the balance of charging a fee that you're happy with, putting out images that you're happy with, and the client still getting the volume of images that they need and that they're happy with to help launch their company. So that's how we navigated that system. And I think it worked really well. And there we go. One happy client and some great images that feature super prominently on my website. I'm delighted with how they turned out. And I'm pleased to say that since I shot these images, we've also gone on to shoot some more with Grindhouse and hopefully we get to shoot some more in the future. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, make sure you do. I post time lapses of like my editing workflow in Photoshop. 
I post behind the scenes photos and breakdowns of my lighting, so telling the power and things like that. I think I have a post on this image actually uh, on my Instagram recently, so make sure you come and give me a follow on Instagram, say hi, say you came from your YouTube. Also, if you have watched some of my latest videos, which I did as YouTube Lives, which were going through mood boarding for a recent personal project, I have since shot said personal project. I got some brilliant behind the scenes footage, so it won't just be me sitting here talking to camera. Make sure you subscribe and hit that bell and you will get notified when I do my YouTube video on that shoot, breaking down the lighting and putting a neat little bow in that whole project and how that turned out. I used a really interesting lighting setup there called CRLS, Cine Reflect Lighting System, I think. Uh, one constant light, with a bunch of different mirrors reflecting light all over the place to create, to simply easily create uh, a beautiful lighting setup that looks like it was lit with 10 different lights, but really it's just one. So super interesting. That was an interesting learning curve for me. I have blabbed on for long enough today. Thanks for checking out the YouTube video. And I will see you again soon. We're nearly at a thousand, we're nearly at a thousand K. No, we're nearly at 1K followers. So it'll be awesome if I could reach that. If you've made it this far, you probably should subscribe anyway. Thanks for doing so, and I'll see you on the next one.